lockdown up there? What's the what's the yeah, it's, it's, it's a little crazy right now, but <laughs> it, we getting through it. We getting through it. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. So how's Tennessee, man? How's it going over there? Man, Tennessee's uh it's it's holding steady, man. We're not quite as crazy as Georgia. You know, Georgia's okay. kinda trying to get back out there. Tennessee's kinda <laughs> like we normally do, man, moving slow. And then here in Memphis, man, you know, we yeah, we we're gonna be on lockdown for a few more weeks, I think. Right. Uh, at okay. a minimum. And yeah. probably gonna be longer than that. So Of course. Of course. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's better safe than sorry. You don't want to open up too too soon, and uh, you know people get sick all over again. So, it's, I think air on the side of precaution. Yeah, you don't want the um, the second wave can be worse than the first. So you got to make sure yeah. you know you don't jump out there too quick, and uh, you know just rev up the numbers all over again, man. So you got to yeah, yeah. like you say it's course. it's a tough thing, man, because a lot of people are you know suffering from being out of work and being furloughed and all that type of, of thing. Of course, man. of course. Yeah. Art goes and out I, to both folks, man. Definitely. And that's why I kind of been balancing. I'm like, man, these people need to get back to work. But then you think like, they go back to work and get sick? Like, <laughs> Right. They go back so, and start, <laughs> just start the whole thing. And then you have to, all, all the months we've been in quarantine, now you got to go right back and it's going to be longer and probably more severe. So you just got to, yeah. you know, they go out to stage this thing, man. It's probably going to be August or September. And uh, Jay, man, they'll they'll stage it, you know. Okay, now you could be around ten people. Now you could be around twenty people, you know. Yeah. But the first thing they got to get the testing. You know what I mean? You got to be able to take the test and get the results back in minutes, you know, yeah. and not days. So exactly, yeah. That's you could true. do that. That that's the first sign to, to getting back to to normal. So. Yeah, and right, ho- hopefully that happens soon. But like you said, I don't, I don't see it happening within the next couple of months. I don't see them having testing. That that quick, or nah. vaccines that quick? But like, I don't see that. So nah, a vaccine probably eighteen months from now. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Hey, you just gotta what, do what we gotta do, man. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is, man. What you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, like, like like we've been talking about, man. I've, I've been since we've been in quarantine. I've been enjoying that they they sped up the doc, and I've been enjoying this. I so how you been feeling about the the uh, this doc so far? The last dance. Yeah, man. So you got the last dance, you know, for me, you know, I guess I'll start with this, Jay, man, because, you know, I, you know, I was born in 81, man. So I'm 39. Mm. So, you know, I was 16, 17 years old when all this Mm. stuff was going on, man. So I watched Mm. it, um, you know, kind of head on, you know what I mean? And so what's the interesting thing is the, the difference in media now, you know, back then we didn't have like what you and I doing now, you know, you didn't have people podcasting that could talk about it. You know, the only way you got information, man, was reading Sports Illustrated or, you know, you might see ESPN, they do the highlights, but, you know, mm-hmm. they didn't dig into the background of, of no, this type of, course, of stuff, no, man. No. And you, there was no Stephen A. Smith, no Max Kellerman, <laughs> you know, there's nobody the barbershop debating it all day, yeah. every day. So, you know, players had their level of privacy back then yeah. that they don't have now. So, man, it's, it's interesting watching the documentary and, and I'm thinking about it from the standpoint of how it would be today mm. and, you know, just how much different, how you compare and contrast. It's, it's night and day. Yeah. Even like the guys, they, they were in their thirties, but they just look older than the players now. Like they all like, like Michael Jordan looks older than LeBron James, even though he was the same age as him. <laughs> yeah. Just that difference in maturity and, yeah, yeah, and the way they different. dressed, you know, they had yeah. the high rows and suits on man with <laughs> big clothes and, the yeah, big chains that it's gonna make you look a little older, you know what I mean? The old <laughs> style, the big clothes. Yeah, it's different, but it it maybe it brought me back to that time. Like you said, I was born in '85, so I was what, about ten, you know. Yeah. Once like when Jordan came back, when he came back to the for the second time, I, I was about ten, and that's when I really started becoming into sports. And the you know my team, the Knicks, just. Lost in the finals in '94, so I was like, "Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was there for all that, man." <laughs> that next so, team, you know, I was, I the next really team was off the that. chain, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they kind of like they was talking about the bad boys in the doc, but the Knicks was kind of like the bad boys' younger brother in the '90s. It, it, yeah, they followed, yeah, they followed suit. Yeah, they followed suit, man. Oakley, Mason, uh, yeah. Charles Smith, them boys, man, they were big. Oh man, yeah. You know what I mean? And tough, so no they doubt were, about. They were. it. <laughs> but like I told you, man, I, I man, I used to rock the John Starks, man. I was in middle school at that time, ninety four. 
That was uh, uh-huh. nine three nine four. That was eighth grade for me. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry, seventh grade. Seventh mm-hmm. grade. And man, I man, I had I got the blue John Starks junk man with the you know you know the orange Knicks going across. That yeah. thing was hard, <laughs> man. And yeah, that was hard, yeah. and it was hard yeah. to find too. So everybody didn't have it. You know, everybody had Michael Jordan, and yeah. everybody had like uh, Sean like Kemp, the, and, or the Patrick Ewing. Or the, yeah, the Ewing junk, you know that sort man. of thing, man. But the John Starks junk was hard to find, man. So when I yeah. got it from the mall, man, I treasured that, man. When I used to write that, <laughs> man, where you get that? Yeah, <laughs> John Starks had with baseline on Jordan and uh, Horace Grant. Yo, oh, great man. man. <laughs> Starks was live, man. Yeah, he was really good. I, I just wish he would have took a couple less shots in game seven and 94, but uh, nobody else that. would shoot. That's that's the problem. That's no true. one else could get a shot because no one could create yeah. a shot for New York, man. That was, the, that was the problem. Yeah, that's true. They had a guy that could create a shot, you know, like a Mitch Richmond or somebody like that, or a Clyde Drexler. It would have yeah. been a different story. Definitely. So, so no. any, any, Cause you said you grew up in around that time. Any surprises, like seeing these people's backstories, and, and what what's like kind of stuck out to you so far? Um, I, I think the big thing that sticks out, man, is going back and realizing Jay just how good Jordan was, man. How athletic mm-hmm. he was, you mm-hmm. know, compared to the guys at that time. You know, coming through the '80s, man, you you had this high scoring, you know, kind of league, and then as the money jumped up. You know, and they start paying players and coaches more that need to win started more. You know, it was more yeah. important. You didn't get as much leash and stuff like that, man. So, you know, when I look at the documentary, man, I, one, I love the documentary. I love yeah. the flow of it. Yeah. I love the, you know, the score of it. You know what I mean? I love reliving those old moments. But, you know, Michael, Michael's just who I thought he was, man. You know, he's, you know, he's a gruff dude, man. You know, he, he <laughs> demanded a lot. Yeah. And, you know, how his whole circle evolved, man. You know, like in the first episode when they talk about him being a rookie, Jay, and opening up the, the hotel room door and seeing the bulls doing lines and <laughs> you know, dudes got chicks in the corner. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? They playing cars, they gambling. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, man, that was the, that was them times. You know what oh, I mean? Of course, of man. It was, cocaine haven man you know yeah, of course of course so it's, it's crazy and, that if he had made a different decision you know what i mean we might not have got mj you know what i mean true. think if he had walked in there man and he gets with a couple of girls and he starts doing lines of coke man who knows <laughs> you know what I'm and, and honestly that would that would have changed the whole league like the league when you think about the way the M- the position the nba is now is because of a jordan and I right. that's one thing that I don't think people are – they're looking at his skills more. But if you look at how he was marketed and, and took advantage and the fact that he made the right decisions while he was on top of the league, like you said, he could have – even though he did the gamble a little bit more than they wanted him to. But other than that, he didn't have too many scandals. So he represented the NBA so well, and they was able to market him. So that's why, like, LeBron is getting $200 million now and they have so many brand deals. It's because of him. Yeah, that, no doubt about it. And so, you know, he was the center stage. Obviously, he's the center stage for this whole documentary. But mm-hmm. all the ancillary pieces, man, from Pippen's story to, you know, so far they've talked about Pippen and Rodman, yeah. you know, and then, you know, Phil Jackson and yeah. the Harry Krause. And, and, you know, the other thing that's crazy, Jay, man, is, you think about this, think about this in today's terms, man. The GM comes out a year in advance and says, you know what? I don't care if y'all win every game. Y'all ain't coming back. <laughs> you know what I mean? You see how crazy that is? Oh, it'd, be like, it'd be like somebody on their job be like, man, I don't care if you get 2,000% of your sales goal. <laughs> I don't care if, ever, you know, you you just not coming back next year. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It'd be yeah, like it's, it's, somebody it's crazy, taking that a yeah. whole year in advance. Like, man, this and guys not even the owner. This guy is the GM. He's, he's basically like middle management. He's middle right. management is yeah, telling yeah. you like you. you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's different now because owners want to be so involved. I think back then owners, they just brought it for just to – Say just so they can get their girlfriend's seats and things. It was different, but now the owners want to be in charge now. Owners <laughs> they want to be right. In it's yeah, that then, would never happen now. That would. <laughs> yeah, the GM had a little bit more power, you know, kind of back then. You know, the owner would be kind of distant, you know, because a lot of the it's the difference in the way those guys made their money too. You know, mm. a guy like Jerry Reinsdorf and you know these guys that made their money through energy and oil and 
you know, that's that true, kind of yeah. stuff where you could do it kind of remote, you yeah. know, and then you started getting the Jerry Jones guys that, you know, want to be involved. And now you get to Mark Cuban, who's more of a, you know, Gen Xer, who's mm-hmm. hands on, you know what I mean? Wants to be involved close to the people. He doesn't want to yeah. just be an entity, right? That's true. But then now you get these guys who make their money through tech, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Which is very people heavy and very innovative yeah. and, you know, creative. And so I think that's Analytics made Analytics and all of that, yeah. Yeah, a lot of data-driven. Yeah, yeah man, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah. No doubt about it, man. So, I mean, what was your overall thoughts, Jay, man? You know, in terms of, I mean, what jumps out at you from, you know, we've seen four episodes now. I mean, the the main thing, it made me appreciate uh, the team and it made me look at Pippen a little bit differently. Mm. Um, His his pay. (laughs) Right, right. But when you look at, but I'm sure people was talking about how he was underpaid back then, but now... When you look at how his family structure was, you kind of understand it. So, you know, he wanted to have a guaranteed contract. He didn't want to say have a short term and say maybe if I play better, they might give me. He didn't want no maybe money. He wanted definite money. So it's understandable, but it's still crushing. Like, man, this guy was getting underpaid for so long. Yeah, it it, tell, it also sheds light to me, man, when you compare kind of more of the AAU generation when you talk about Pippen, because Pippen didn't come up like, some mm-hmm. like, like I was, you, you know, my generation is kind of that beginning of that AAU, you mm-hmm. know, kind of era where guys would play together. There was money trickling down, mm-hmm. you know, guys, even when guys came from poor areas, they, you know, like, you know, this is a guy from like the bottoms of Arkansas, man, yeah. he got <laughs> yeah. family members in wheelchairs, you know, nobody's yeah. really making no money. You know, like it's all on him. Whereas like these guys now today, you take like a Ja Moran or somebody like that, Zion, you know, they, they didn't come up with silver spoons, but you know, they yeah. weren't hurt. You know what I mean? No, like, no, 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 no. They, they didn't have them hunger pains like that. Cause, cause you know, so it's, once it's you crazy. make it to that level, you know, yeah. Scotty was the, the equipment manager. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So, you and know, when, you, when they show those the stories bag, would never happen now. It was yeah. like, basically the NBA is kind of planned out now. Like if you own a, at a top school, or if you had a top, even a top high school, you're probably on track to make it. It's very rare that somebody from the bottom of Arkansas can, can even get the notoriety to, to be in the NBA. So. Right. Now, so here's the thing with him and Rodman that kind of is a parallel because both of them had them humble beginnings, small yeah. school. You know, we're talking about Pippen and Rodman. And they had them big, crazy growth spurts, Jay. Yeah. You know, where it's dude true. shows up. 5'9", five, 5'10", five, 5'11", five, and then a year or two later, he's 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, that don't sure. happen no more too much either, man. Like, nah, you right. having that kind of growth <laughs> where, you know, that's in true. one year, you grow five inches, man. That's that's crazy. That is true. And also, looking at the differences in how Rodman's game developed, Rodman was a scorer in college, and then he goes to the NBA, and I don't want to score. I just want to rebound and play defense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. You know what? That's a that's a crazy thing too about him. That's different than today's guys. Man, is you know he he knew what was gonna keep him in the league, and he committed mm-hmm. to that. Man, most guys ain't gonna commit to. I'm just gonna go out there and rebound and, and play defense. Uh, you know true. what I mean? Because today's guy wants to take 15 threes a game, and <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, wants to be yeah. an all star and wants to be the guy. And I think that's yeah. why a lot of guys feels a lot of the NBA today versus in the past. Like, think about this, man. You look at the Bulls team, man. If you lined up, you know, Bill Winnington, Jay, and Bud Bushler, and Steve Kerr, you know, most guys, you know, they wax those kind of dudes. You know what I mean? But the fact that those dudes were willing to play them roles like that and were so selfish or selfless, you know, it it makes a big difference between the two errors. You know what I mean? And that's what made them so good. I think – you got to give Phil Jackson credit too to yeah. able to keep those guys. Say, look, you just rebound and we're gonna win. I got you. Just just rebound. Don't worry about nothing. Just rebound. And they bought into it. He was able to have them buy into it, and and it, and it worked. Yeah, absolutely. And you know the thing is, is when Rodman said, you know, I think it was in episode three. He said, "Man, I play for free. The only the reason I get to get paid is for this other you know, <laughs> yeah, it's true. off the court. It's so he's true. like, I play basketball for free." <laughs> and that's just like, that's just a different mentality because, man, he would go – like, man, I was looking at the stats, Jay, man. You know, he, I think his last year or two in Detroit, this man averaged over like five or six offensive rebounds a game. 
Uh, now think about that. Think if you get one guy that's getting you six extra possessions a game. You give him to Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dubon. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Stanley and all, you know, you got these guys that, and you getting them six extra shots a game. I mean, that's for yeah. one guy. I mean, that, that's yeah. cool. That's amazing, yeah. Yeah, no now, doubt he, about it. They, 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 which you also got to give Krause, even though I think he's crazy, you got to give Krause credit for, for coming up with the idea to get Robin. Yeah, well, you know, at the time, man, you know, he was damaged goods in San Antonio. I, I remember when he got to San Antonio because it was crazy because I don't know if you remember that movie with uh, Wesley Snipes, Demolition Man. Yes, 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 yes. Wesley Snipes and uh, Sylvester Stallone. Well, yeah, Jay, yeah. You know, really, Rodman just kind of copied that look because, you know, Wesley had the, the blonde-dyed hair and all yeah. this type of stuff. And, you know, we thought he was going crazy, man. I, I, was, <laughs> I was like, man, what's up with this dude, man? Yeah. We, now, I remember I used to have his basketball cards and, like, I had like two different cars and each car had different hair color and it was, it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was a wild <laughs> time, man. It definitely was, but I man, shout out to ESPN for, for the last dance, man. It's been, it's by Iowa. I'm so looking forward, man, to the next episodes, man. It's yeah. you know, when they start digging into Horace Grant, you know, I want to hear some more from Ron Harper. <laughs> you know, That's I, true. That's true. You know, I want to hear some more from, you know, some of the other guys on the team, yeah. you know, that sort of thing, man. And, and you know, what do you think about this, Jay, man, with Michael's can Like, usually Michael Jordan's kind of scripted. You know, he, mm-hmm. he usually only do interviews with Amar Rashad back in the day. And yeah. He was always, you know, he like that thing Kobe talked about, you know, the game of basketball, the game of basketball. Yeah, it's basketball, true, it's true. The game of basketball, right? He's, he was so scripted. He's being but at this, man, it's, it's, it's my first time seeing him kind of laid back. That's true. You know, just being candid, like, we talk about Isaiah Thomas, man. And and I love seeing 50 plus year old dudes like being super petty. And, and that's you know what I was going to mention too. That <laughs> they're still upset about it. Him and Isaiah, they're still upset about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Like you think, okay, man, 1991, you're talking about now 29 going on 30 years ago. No, and now when go. you bring up a dude's name, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's still salty about it. You know what oh, I mean? It's man, just, yeah. It's just wow. Would, would you pay attention? Because after the documentary, I don't. I don't think Isaiah saw Michael Jordan's part for that episode. So yeah. I think after the, on Monday, uh, first take, Isaiah Thomas is, is is giving his his part of it again, saying they shouldn't get no. They should be awarded for lifting weights and <laughs> right. Yeah, he, he's still upset about it. That both of them, they're still upset. Yeah, fifty plus year old dudes that are petty. Um. <laughs> You know, that's, uh, man, that, that's hilarious, man. It's just, yeah, it you know, and I guess for me, you know, you share your thoughts on this, Jay, man. I, I guess for me at the time, mm-hmm. it was like, man, that's just poor sportsmanship. Because, you know, I'm young, man, and we're playing ball, and we're taught, you know, yeah. matter of fact, in the games, you you know this from play, playing too, man. They always line you up, and you go by, you shake every other, you know, the yeah, player, of other teams, yeah. you know, hand and that sort of thing, and high five. And it's always that good sportsmanship. Man, I see both sides of it because, like I say, nobody got on the Celtics about doing it or other yeah. teams about walking off the court and not, you know, shaking a, the other team's hand. And so, man, it's, it's just crazy, man. It's wild. It's, it's also the game is still going on, maybe. Maybe maybe it was that. Maybe, you know, I think it was like, like three seconds left in the game and y'all just walking out. <laughs> And it is the fa- if y'all if the locker room is closer to to the bench maybe they gotta walk past their bench to leave. <laughs> yeah, man, you gotta walk past disruptive. the other team to get yeah. to the locker room. That was crazy, <laughs> man. But like yeah. I said, them dudes are salty, man. You, man, oh, man a lot of this. Upset, and the bro. thing is, is like Zeke said, man, it hurt him, man, because he should have been on that dream team. No, oh, absolutely, he should have been. But I think it was also. It was it was that, and I think maybe Magic Johnson too. I think he kind of would. Yeah, I think because he probably wanted to run the point. Who would have ran the point if I if Isaiah Thomas would have got there? Hey man, hey, look on that team, Doc. Going back and and remembering it, the positions didn't matter. They like yeah, that's true. Put, put five dudes out there with that's a beat, yeah. and yeah. that was it, man. Like I remember watching those games, and, yo, because I yo, you had the game on Sega Genesis, which was off the chain. Yeah, but then just going back and watching them games, Jay. Man, they you know, like you say, Chuck Daly was just putting five dudes out there, you know, whether it's Barkley or Ewing or Robinson, and they were just, you know, the rest of the world was so behind back yeah, then, yeah. man, because they didn't play in any game. I don't know if there was any game where they were even down two to nothing. 
No, I don't think so. No, you know what I mean? So. They, they, they yeah. were blowing people. The, the overwhelming talent was just crazy. And you could see, like, those guys was fans of them. So it was, like, after the game, getting their autographs and all that. It's right. crazy. Yeah, so that contributed to it, too. Like, you, you, it's hard to go at a guy that, you know, you're a fan of. You know what I mean? So, of course. You know, and then the whole story with Tony Kukoc, you know, which I hope comes up in the documentary because, mm-hmm. you know, when Tony came along, you know, Pippen and them was hot, man. They locked them down in the in the oh, Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I heard about that, yeah. I love to see how they felt about Kukoc throughout that whole process because he was a major contributor to their winning. Yeah, you know what I mean? But, you know, they always had this kind of competitive disdain for the guy <laughs> you know, based on his reputation overseas and, yeah. and that sort of thing. And I think Kukoc was actually the one that opened up international play. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, because Ku Coach's success opened the door for Dirk and these guys that came later. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's true. And I don't think he gets credit for that. But I think it's because, especially he got more noticeable because they were on winning teams. They was going to the finals. So he, everything is Ku Coach, Ku Coach. But never <laughs> – so he, he was scoring a lot. He was a scorer. He, uh, he, was, he was a good passer. He was a pretty good player. Yeah, he's a great player, man. He's a great player. So, man, what do you think about – you know, I guess it, the you know, outside of Zeke and the whole bad boy thing, what mm-hmm. do you think about, the, you know, that summer beforehand, you know, when, you mm-hmm. know, they, they lose to the uh, Pistons, Jay, and then Mike basically has everybody come in for the summer doing the weight training. <laughs> what yeah, do you think yeah. about that? That was crazy, <laughs> I, too. I think this major, and I, it's good that the team cooperated. I think everybody was just tired of losing. And I think that's yeah. – <clears throat> I think that's a good learn uh, a good uh, learning point where you just you're tired of losing. You want to get to a certain level. You just do what you got to do. Yes, you can go on vacation. You can have more fun. But if you really want to win, you just do what you got to do. And I, and I think that they just locked in, which is why they became champions over and over again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, I, like I said, I'm I'm looking forward to the other episodes, man, and. I just think it's a you know, it, it's a great document series, you know, uh, documentary series, and I think they got what uh, you got episodes what five and six coming up, and then yeah. what, seven, eight, and then what nine and ten. So, so yeah, what, man. So how how do you think these guys would have handled uh, nowadays with social media and every game is kind of nitpicked and the Stephen A. Smiths of the world and how do you how do you I can't imagine a Jordan dealing with that because <laughs> you yeah. can tell he he, he kind of has like an attitude and he's private. So I can't imagine with these guys nitpicking with him, right? He would yeah, lose. You it. know what? I've always said this, man. And this usually never gets said on these debate shows when you're comparing errors. Mm-hmm. My thing is always people will adjust to the environment that they're around. So you'll mm-hmm. think about this: if if they had grew up with that, that it would have been part of their culture, right? That's Versus. True. Like, I, you know, like if people compare LeBron and Michael, I said, you can't compare. You've got to also compare what went on around them. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if, if a dude grew up in the 60s, right, where you had really overt racism, you had a different set of kind of morals on how people operate, a little more homogenous and what people believed in. You didn't have this view of the world. You hadn't been exposed <laughs> to the world at a young age. So like now mm-hmm. with the Internet, man, you know, you, you can get connected to anybody, anywhere, anytime. That's true. So I think each error, you know, you have to take that into account. You know what I mean? Yeah. But all things being flat and considered, man, them dudes wouldn't have survived that, man, with, <laughs> with that exposure to social media. Because, man, Robin, Robin Oh, school. my God, right? Robin, <laughs> all of them, oh, Dr. J, because th- back then, man, you were so used to having your privacy. You mean Larry was- Bird probably would have been a fool. Larry- oh, man, all of them would have been. <laughs> All of them were clowns, dude. Yeah, because yeah, right? you know, like especially if they got it as adults and had yeah, not yeah, grown yeah. up with it. See, like these cats like John Morant, man, who's always had it, they're more mature and they don't look as mature, but they're more mature in their mindset because of there's course. so much money involved. And there's yeah. you know, so they've been prepared and coached and you know what I mean? And, and they got so coach. much people. Yeah, you know, they they basically small businesses. They all all walking small businesses. Right, exactly. There's so much riding on them, Jay. And the other thing is, is that when they know that what they say is going to be scrutinized, mm-hmm. so they make a conscious decisions to just not say certain things. That they're they're calculated, I think, in how they, you know, you know, portray themselves publicly. 
I think yeah. back in the day, man, you would have had <laughs> like imagine if Lynn Bias, unfortunately, you know, he passed oh, away after the draft, but imagine if he had been on that binger and had social media where he, yeah, was, he was tweeting, he yeah, was tweeting the whole time. Well, and, oh you know my mean? god, and Instagram oh. stories and all that. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you would have saw I mean? everything yeah. that night. You would have saw everything that night. Yeah, if people so, would have been taking pictures of them laid out, it would have been crazy. Yeah, yeah it, it would have been wild, man. So, mm-hmm. nah, to answer your question, bro, I no way. <laughs> <laughs> none of them dudes, man. I'm talking about none uh, of them. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. That's true. None of them dudes would have survived social media. <laughs> and I think the, the other flip side of that is a lot of t- dudes wouldn't have been able to deal with what those dudes dealt with coming up. Because, you know, they yeah, were kids yeah. in the 70s, man, right out of civil rights. You know what I mean? Sure. A lot of today's guys are used to that integration. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're used to, you know, if a white person asks them this or, you know, they, they used to have white people around and being cool. Sure, you know? yeah. They don't think in terms of, and, and they was kind of you know, like you said. We was talking about the the AAU thing. That those guys are kind of pampered from a young age. They they all just pampered. Everything is basketball. They like insulated. So imagine they grew up with like had to be equipment manager. Like right. John Moran can't be equipment manager. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, those dudes, you know, came from, you know what I mean? Like when Rodman talks about, man, he got kicked out of the house, yeah, you know, nah. as a teenager. That See, nah. that don't happen with today's dudes. Like nah, that. You're not kicking out a, a, a five-star basketball player. You're not yeah, kicking him out there. <laughs> see, honestly, Rodman wasn't that, though. See, and yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was just a kid, you know what I mean? True. He became Rodman, you know, like, say, in college when, like you say, when you, you go, you know this, man, you go from 5 to 11, and then the next year you 6 four. You know what I mean? That that makes a big difference, of and, course, especially 100%. if you got the same game. Yeah, of course. like Pippen. Like Pippen was playing point guard, and all of a sudden now he's six, seven, six, eight. It's so over. He still yeah. got the point guard skills. You yeah, know, what I mean? it's over. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's wild, man. But like you said, I, I just yeah. love the way it's put together, man. I, I love the you know the the candid dialogue. You yeah. know what I mean? I love definitely. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, I love how Michael Jordan had his uprise. You know, the, the losing that he did, even when he scored the sixty-three points against Boston, yeah. and you know how they got to the point where they started winning. And oh, did you? Oh man, let me ask you about this, man. We can talk yeah. about it. Um, right. What did you think about the whole Doug Collins, Phil Jackson thing? Because something I didn't know, I didn't know yeah. Phil was an assistant. I thought me, Phil I didn't know that either. I didn't know up. either. Yeah, I didn't know it either. But I didn't know that Jerry Krause was being sneaky and got him in there to be an assistant. <laughs> Jerry Krause was petty, man. Jerry Krause yeah, was like, man, was his stepdaughter's wedding oh, and all this stuff, Jerry man. Krause, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like he, that would he, not he, happen today, man. That whole Jerry. Oh, Krause. of course. Nah, not at all. <laughs> but the whole Phil Jackson thing, it's like Phil Jackson came behind his man's back and you know, like yeah. he kind of stabbed Doug in the back, you know, a little yeah. bit with you that. You can see man. even Doug, he didn't like that, you know. Doug is kind of <laughs> petty about that too. Yeah, he said, "I knew, I knew Phil was gonna be the coach." He said, "How do you know?" I just knew. I just knew. Yeah. He just, <laughs> yeah, you know, he didn't really go into no detail with that man. Yeah, but yeah. Phil comes in, text winners. They they institute triangle offense. You know, Mike's reluctant to it. You know, I love what yeah. I was laughing what Mike said, man, about man. You know, you know, Doug put the ball in my hand. Phil won out. You know, have Bill Cartwright shoot the ball with five seconds left. <laughs> man, that had me laughing yeah. too, man. Yeah, it's true. When you think about it, he had he had Scottie Pippen in, in the, the his first three P. He just had Scottie Pippen and a bunch of nobodies, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they, they were so young, you know, and they were so thin. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. So, yeah. like when Mike was winning all that, he was six six, two hundred pounds. Yeah, you know what I mean, 195 pounds. He didn't like, have nobody on that team. Bill yeah. Cartwright, uh, John Paxson. He was a decent shooter, but it wasn't. Yeah, he had no play like roles, that. man. So the thing, yeah, like, yeah. you go back, like I tell a lot of people, man. If you go back and watch the full games, mm-hmm. yo, know, the thing was, his Mike was so unstoppable. You would overcompensate the Mike, and then mm-hmm. they leave somebody else open, and then someone's getting a tip in rebound or yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, so it was all this people were playing these roles. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's different. It, like I say, today's game, everybody wants the ball. Yeah. You know I mean, and you got a lot of guys. Their game is predicated on them having the ball, and then they get on the, on the team with James Harden, who's a supreme ball guy. Yeah. And then I when love, I love the ball, Charles Barkley. He's a dribble, dribble, dribble. Yeah, but yeah, Barkley said, "Wow, the whole shot clock." 
you know, <laughs> you know pounding you, you know, putting oh, his butt on you and all that. And so, man, you know, today's guys can't adjust to that role. Like, there's like the closest guy that was in today's game like that was like a Tony Allen, mm. you know, when he played. Where it's like, this is a dude, man. When, you know, I say that from Memphis standpoint, but grit and grind. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where he's the type of dude that decide he knew he's gonna stay in the NBA not by scoring but by defense and rebound doing the, the small stuff you know, being a pest and yeah you know and I love what Gary Payton said man he taught he said you know Robin was the f up guy you know what I mean it's true it worked though yeah. it worked <laughs> it worked yeah. so so speaking of, speaking of Memphis how how you doing without the NBA right now like oh, how, how you, without sports period man. It, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a struggle, man, as a sports guy without having any kind of live sports. You know, it's hard. Mm-hmm. You know, you can only watch so many of, like, the old games and stuff yeah, like exactly, that. Yeah, exactly. You know, I usually watch that anyway on YouTube. But watching them on TV where you already know what the outcome's going to be. Yeah, it's, it's like, tough. I tried to watch the 2016 finals with uh, Cleveland and uh, Golden State, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I – like – I've seen this before, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's it, not suspenseful. Nah, it didn't really move me, other than seeing when LeBron got the block on Nigadala and Kyrie yeah. with the shot and, you know, all that type of stuff, man. Like, watching that was cool, but mm. nah, man. With I, 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 We got to get back to it. But, man, what? let me ask you this, man. What? How do you think the NBA, you know, opens back up? You know, what, what do you think about that? Like, do you think uh. – what scenario do you see – things opening back up um to me I, I see that i heard that they're trying to open up practice facilities uh i think this week or next week that's going to take a, a good two weeks you know players getting back into shape and all that so i, I don't see I, I see the season ending they keep saying that they don't want to cancel the season but i say cancel it and, and start again it's unfortunate you don't want to yeah. have it end like that but i say cancel it and start again all right, so I'm going to give you mine real quick because I sent this actually to the NBA mailbox okay. a couple of weeks ago. So here, okay. here it is. You take two cruise ships, right? Now, yeah. Ain't nobody going on no cruises. Take yeah. two big cruise ships, one for each conference, all right? Mm. You dock them, you know, kind of, you know, on whatever coast you want to be, or you do it here in Memphis, here on the Mississippi River, whichever one you want okay. to do. <laughs> so what you do is on each ship, you build two courts, indoor courts. You know, we're all, I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise ship, but you know how they, um, you know, on it, they'll have all these little restaurants and all these shopping malls and all that. Mm-hmm. You can take all that out. You just need to put a basketball the court. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and put two full court basketball courts. Then what you do is you let the players, you, you test everybody coming on the ship. Players, immediate family, meaning like a spouse and kid. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. everybody else stay off. You know, uh, coaches, limited media. Yeah, so like ESPN can only send like three or four guys or something like that. You know, you can't send the whole house. Yeah. So what you do is you got two ships. So you got players, coaches, media, chefs, all that coming on the ships. You keep the ships docked right there. Mm. And then you play games. You have a two week training camp, yeah. and you just play with the um, the sixteen playoff teams. Mm. Right? And then you do a best three out of five for the first two rounds, and then the conference finals and the NBA finals are best of seven. And the NBA Finals, you can play between ships. So the Eastern uh, Conference team, the Western Conference team, they just take boats between the ships. That you know makes what I mean? sense. See, what you do is you, you keep that quarantine so you, you don't have – it's easier to keep people off a ship than out of a yeah. city. It's true. You know what and I mean? So that's my thing. You'll have spectators because the other teams will be spectators, the other teams' families will be spectators, and they'll be into it because it's the playoffs. So it, it makes yeah. sense. It's be, it'd be like a, almost like an AAU game. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Basically, you just have the families there, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's it, just immediate families. No, you know, maybe the, the girlfriend, the wife, you know, the kids, you know, that's yeah. it. Not every, not all the cousins and all the homies and all that, you know what I mean? It just makes sense. Test them coming on, and then you might say, well, what if somebody get, you know, seasick or whatever? Well, like I said, there's medicine you could take for that. Yeah, and they've got team, you- team doctors and all that, they'll be yeah. all right. I'd rather you get that than the coronavirus. You know what I mean? Well, so, yes. well if you get too sick, they get a helicopter and take yeah, you out of there. Yeah. <laughs> but like I say, most guys, once they get adjusted to it, they'll be fine. You know what I mean? And yeah. you're not taking it out into the water. You just yeah. have it kind of docked close by the land. So they can sure. still see the land and 
You know what I mean? They don't get that sense like we out in the middle of nowhere. But to me, you do that, and it won't take them long to build the courts. You know what I mean? No. Like you go on there, you build the courts in a, probably about a month to six weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, man. So you could actually start the playoffs like July 1st, mm-hmm. and you'll have it over with by the middle of August you know, with that format. And then you, the next season starts as normal in, in October with that no fans. Sense. You know what I mean? Oh, with but no fans. See, that's that's crazy. With no fans? Yeah, yeah it's got to be, so man. Your prediction, your prediction is not to next year? Like nothing until Oh, yeah, year. yeah, man. It's, it's going to be next year before. Because you got to, like you say, you got to be able to test. Like, like if they're going to test me, they got to be able to test me and give me the results in like five minutes or ten minutes. Yeah. So it can't be five or seven days. Because, you know, I, I can go and, inf- you know, there's a lot of things I can go do in that time. No, Versus if you sense. test me and you got me in a room for five minutes, you come back and say, oh, no, you good or no, nah, you, know, you got it. You got to stay in here, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I, to me, that's the way, Jay, I, I see it working out. But like I said, that's the thing I submitted. Uh, hopefully Adam Silver gets it, man, <laughs> and, and reads it. Well, he said, he said everything is on the table, so we yeah, never know. He <laughs> that's what he said. Everything is on <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, it's so, true. It's true, man. Yeah, get them on the cruise ships, man. That's the way. Because, like I say, in a city, it's too easy, Jay, for, you know, you can sneak this in or uh, somebody can drive in the middle of the night or, you know, it's too easy to versus, like, because there's too many ways to get into a city. Yeah. You know I mean, on a cruise ship, ain't too many ways to get on that ship. No. Once you, you know what I mean? One, uh, yeah, true. so. My thing well, is, I, I was, it's, it's, it's interesting. I never heard, I never th- thought of that. I never thought of that, but it's different. Yeah. So get them on the ship, man. And, you know, if you want to put it, yeah, we'll welcome them here in Memphis, man. Put it right on the Mississippi River, <laughs> centrally located. True. You know, and then you can stream all of it. You know, you, you have yeah. your people, so it's on TV. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Get, get, Sh- get uh, Kenny and Shaq and, and, and Charles. Yeah, they're part of the media. Get them, yep. Get yeah, them on so get Kenny and Shaq. They can go between ships. Yeah, because you know they they not but the thing is now if they do it they can't be leaving they can only be nah, on they get on ships. between yeah go between yeah, ships so you can't it. leave and go nowhere else so nah, you gotta nah. be committed for about six weeks <laughs> yeah that's true you know what I mean but they they, they get do, paid enough to be committed they get paid oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you make that kind of money man you good yeah you know definitely, I mean? but see now man. the TV contract can still go and you still go have games yeah. even though you you'll have some fans there just be family. You got mm-hmm. the referees, and you know, I mean, you know, you know. Yeah, you just make do. And, yeah, you make this do. is tough, though. You're saying that next season probably will start without fans. That's tough. Yeah, I think so, man. It's going to be hard to get fifteen to 20,000 people in an arena because that's fifteen, twenty thousand 20,000 people coming from all over. You don't know who's yeah. what. And, again, man, if mm-hmm. you can't test to get quick results, yeah. you know, what you don't want is, you know, a setback. You don't want – because you already had – you dodged the bullet with Rudy Gobert and – yeah, uh, you know these guys, the two Lakers that had it, and, you know a couple of these guys, man. But you don't want a situation where a guy gets it and you know really yeah. has something serious. You know what I mean? That's true. Uh, they they they're worth too much to to be playing yeah. around with that. Yeah, you can't have you know what I mean. And I don't even want to say it. You know what I mean? But you yeah, can't yeah, have yeah. somebody transition life. You know That's what true. I mean? That's, That's it's true. Like, yeah, you talk about yep. a major blow. And you talking about the insurance, man? You the family is sued a mess. Yeah, that you know. With, yeah. with, um, but you know, the other side of it is, I hate that not having fans. What that does for the worker, you know what I mean? Because mm. you know, for an NBA game to go on, man, there's a lot of work. You know what I mean? There's yeah. a lot of people that take tickets, a lot of custodian people, you know, a lot of people right. that um, service food, you know, food That's and true. beverage. You know, people that do and you got the businesses sports. that surround the stadiums. They got those yeah. little bars and restaurants that surround the stadiums that they all getting hurt right now. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, yeah, I don't. I don't know what you do with that, man. It's it's yeah. tough. And a lot of those workers are hourly people, man. They only get paid when there's mm-hmm. a game. That's you know true. what I mean? And, and like you say, some of those businesses are are set up to benefit yeah. from those yeah. games. Yeah. You know, that's where they make most of their money. So, yeah, man, yeah, shout out tough. to those. Yeah, yeah man. So, so so since I got you on, I got to talk about your podcast, man. So yeah, minding your business podcast. First of all, how did you get started, and how's it how's it going with with, with this quarantine and coronavirus yeah, stuff man. going on? Yeah, the quarantine thing has actually been, you know, podcasting's been up obviously since you know, all this is going on with people having their devices and having a little bit more free time. 
uh, than normal to, to dig into podcasting, man. But yeah, I started it August of 2017 and okay. it's been phenomenal, man. Just released uh, my 147th episode. Uh, oh, this nice, and, nice. And nice. really the focus on it is about the best practices in business, you know, from mm -hmm. myself and from my guests. It's just an organic sharing, um, you know, no fancy editing. No, mm. I, don't, I don't have no big fancy studio, although this looks you know, like something here with my virtual background, but yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not in no fancy studio, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm like everybody else, man. I'm just a guy out here that wants to share as, as the best content that I can. Yeah. And uh, man, I'm appreciative to to everybody that listens and and subscribes. But yeah, you know, I try to have guests from I, you know all over the place, okay. and it, it's really just again designed to learn about somebody's background and hear their best practices of what made them successful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how that can translate to yourself. So mm -hmm. I started it based on the fact, Jay, that I wanted people to, when, they, when they're done listening to it, they say, man, I can go, there's something from that I can go do and implement. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about entrepreneurship in the sense of starting a business, but it's the mindset. Yes, right? yes. So what, you know, whether you're in the workforce, because yeah, entrepreneurship is about ownership and taking risk. Mm -hmm. And so I share that whether you're in the workforce and or you're in entrepreneurship you can still have that mindset yeah sure you know what i mean and so taking that mindset and applying is what we try to do definitely man i was, I was just listening to i had to listen to it just because i thought i, I thought the business was interesting i think the guy created a a pet app like yeah a, a, yeah i was like i was like wait what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my guy Roy Stein, man, with yeah. uh, Babel Bart, man. It's yeah, and that's yeah. the thing, man. You want I like to hear from people all over, man, and, and yeah, let the yeah. audience hear organically. Yeah. You know, man, what did you do? How did you work with your partner? You know, yeah. what setbacks did you see? You know, what I mean, that sort of thing. So just kind of that raw, organic. You know, nothing scripted. Just yeah, because I, I think a, a lot of uh, business and entrepreneur content. It's kind of so. It's kind of the same. I like that you're having a, a, like the kind of like the everyday business, like the real nitty gritty. Because I, I love I'm I'm a, I'm a love Gary V, but like, people like him, they're showing like like the uh, people doing the the tech side, or it just doesn't seem obtainable. The stuff that, that he's talking about. So having people that's actually didn't get in the nitty gritty, it, I think that's that's good content. I think that's necessary. Yeah, Gary Gary Vee's good people, man. He's he's organic. He's raw. You no, know, he uses the mm. language and stuff like that that makes him raw. Uh, the one thing he misses that he doesn't always share is, you know, his dad was already you know, operating a million dollar plus yes. business. So, mm. you know, that makes it easier when you can go to dad, even if you don't do well of in course. school and yeah. all that. But you're running a, a liquor, you know, wine business, and he's making five, six, seven, eight million dollars a year already. So then of he course. can give you. Ten thousand yeah. dollars and say, "Hey, go do that." Honestly, I would like to hear from his dad, like how his dad, right. like I would like to hear. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, but I, I love his advice, man. I love you know yeah, his, yeah, his approach. You know, he's yeah. got a very candid, you know, approach, and he's very opinionated on some subjects. So he's good people, yeah. man. But like I said, what I try to do that's a little different, bring something different to the game is, you know, Jay, just that organic. You know, how did you do it? And I yeah. try to. You know, a lot of my questions and stuff is, you know, what, you know, like you say, you know, I'm trying to get them to, you know, share with me, you know, you know, there's that tidbit that they don't share because, you know, people mm -hmm. just say, yeah, we just went and I bought my first car. I did, well, you know, but yeah. where'd you get the money? You know what I mean? Yes, like, exactly. Major, yeah. I try to get it to like, step, yeah, yeah, man. What did, you know? what did you tell the bank? They, I know they yeah. gave you a loan, but what did you tell them to get the loan? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. like, what did you say? You know what I mean? Yeah, what did yeah, you do? Yeah. You know, one of my favorite questions I like to ask people, man, is take me back to that day where you almost said, man, forget this, F this, man. I'm going to go back. Yeah. To, take me that to that, that day where you almost gave up, you know, mm. walk me through what, what happened and then what kept you going? What was yeah. it that kept you going? Because everybody kind of has that day and mm. then, there's, you know, some people give up and go do something else or they fall out the game and then other people keep going. Yeah, you know what I mean? Definitely. So that's, that's for most of us. Yeah. And so, you know, what is that day? And, you know, I get people to, to share that as opposed to having cookie cutter questions and saying, of course, yeah. you know, 
Um, just grind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where it's like, man, I just worked hard. Well, man, no, nah, yeah, no. Nah, yeah. Tell me about you. Yeah, you, you, know what I mean? you did more than yeah, work yeah. hard. That is true. You know, so, was, was, since you, you, you're in the business field and you're talking to business owners, what's, what's your feel on this situation? Like, how, how are business, are they optimistic? Do you feel that a lot of small businesses are going to close? Like, what's, what's your feel? Yeah, but my feel is this, man. I think it's obviously it's a huge impact. Businesses um, are reeling right now, you know, because mm-hmm. a lot of them haven't gotten, you know, the payment protection loans and the SBA stuff. They're, those applications are still sitting out there. And so um, a, a lot of small business owners are very heartfelt, man. That's their baby. And one of the things they hate, man, is when it impacts their employees that help make the business go. And so when I talk to a lot of you know, small business owners, you know, now and, and through my banking ties, that's what they're, they're most concerned about is, you know, how do I retain my employees? And then, you know, obviously there's a lot of uncertainty around when I'm going to be able to open back up. Now, some mm-hmm. businesses are, are, are doing well, you know, businesses that are in tech, businesses that do well with remote work, like, you know, remote sales and stuff like that. They're doing well, but restaurants, hotels, you know, the beauty industry, you know, all that type of thing, man, they're struggling. And I think, you know, they're just looking for answers. And I don't think all of them are as confident in the government providing those answers. So, you know, it's a tough situation. Um, The big thing, Jay, man, that's a concern is the unemployment. Because with the government giving that extra $600, there's concern that some people are making more money in unemployment than they were working. That's true. And so what effect could that have on the economy and things going forward? When things do open up, the government's going to have to be real strict to try to weed those people off of that so that they're yeah. incentivized to go work. Absolutely. Because you know, otherwise, if you're incentivized to, to not work, you know, that can have a great impact on all of, of them. Of course. So, yeah, that's true. Especially you, those you, open up, you open up work and you don't got no employees. <laughs> like everybody's messed up. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. It's no true. doubt. Yeah, man. But definitely let people know how they can reach out to you, uh, especially you offer podcasts and services. Let them know how they can reach out for that also. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no that. doubt. Yeah, no doubt, man. Jay, I appreciate it, man. It's, it's always great to, you know, to holler at you. Um, I want to have you on my show as well, too, man. So okay. uh, right. that I'm invite's down. open to you, man. We need to get that scheduled to get you on and, and talk about some things uh, for sure, man. But yeah, the Mind of Your Business podcast, man, y'all subscribe. Uh, five star, five star on Apple. Um, like Jay knows, that helps push your podcast along. Um, continue to support Jay uh, with his show, man. It's, a, it's an awesome show. Very organic. Uh, lots of love, man. So y'all continue to support his efforts. And like I said, you can check me out at themybpodcast.com. So that's themybpodcast.com. And then like Jay alluded to, man, uh, brand, brandyourpod.com. Uh, that's my company, BrandPod, where I'm, I'm helping businesses as well as individual brands. If you want to launch your podcast, uh, now's the time to do it. You know, a lot of people have been talking about wanting to do it. You know, now is, I'm telling you, now is the time to do it. <laughs> More than likely, you probably got the equipment to get started already sitting around your house or in your office. And so reach out to me, man. And, um, it, you know, I'll, I'll be sure to take care of you. And uh, just let me know if you reach out to me. Uh, let me know that you heard this podcast. And again, make sure y'all support Jay uh, with this effort, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, man. Thanks again. And uh, check out check out the, the doc on Sunday, man. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. What we, matter of fact, why don't we do this, man? I'll have you, you know, on my uh, podcast, man, and we'll we'll talk about some of these up, episodes coming up, okay. man. Okay. Five and six, uh, seven. Definitely, man. Let's get you in, man. Let's talk about that. I appreciate. It.